Okay, so we are still on our YouTube membership. And today we were going to just um, do more of life market mentorship, right? You know, we did top data analysis yesterday, right? So I'm going to just be using um top data analysis with the concepts I've taught to explain certain moves and you know certain trades are even caught, right? So you guys understand it, right? So, so I actually caught some trades this week. I'm not be using those trades, you know, the ones that pan out, even the ones that do not pan out, just to give you guys a better explanation of how these things work real time because. It's one thing to watch a video and understand how it works theoretically, and it's another thing to work how, understand how it works from the practical perspective. Like that is what we call forward testing. Now, one thing about forward testing is that it's very difficult to forward test when you don't back test because some people, some of you guys, what you guys do is that you just watch these videos like a movie. Like you just watch it. You know, movies are watched. Like you, after you watch a movie, you don't you don't really do anything more more than just watching it, right? Or when we say see a movie, whatever you want to see, right? So when, when you see a movie, the only thing you really do is just to, you know, enjoy the information. If you miss something, you replay. But when it comes to videos, educative videos, you're supposed to be jotting things down. You're supposed to be jotting things down. You're supposed to be taking back test sessions. Like you go back in time. For instance, now if I teach you about other blocks, you're supposed to go to your charts maybe four, four or five months back and then identify the other blocks and the other blocks based on the conditions I talk about, right? Based on the conditions I talk about. So that is basically what you should be doing. You shouldn't just be watching these videos like a movie, right? You watch and then you you wait for another person. You know, you, we watch the video and then we wait for me to finish up and then you do your quote. So some of you, when you even watch the video, some of you are always doing something else, like you know, you're playing with your children, you know, watching um, you, some of you are even chatting on your phone. You're not going to make the most of this information that way, right? So you really need to step up. So let's look at yesterday's price action. So we're talking about life mentorship now. Like, we want to use this concept on real time, right? All right. So this is um, the daily chart, right? Now, it's here is this. Um, so we had this area here. We had, uh, well, we hit our liquidity targets. Oh, let me undo that. Let me undo that. So hit our liquidity targets like I pointed out yesterday. I think I pointed this liquidity out yesterday, right? In this day's teaching, do you get that markets was reversing from this imbalance down here, right? So now, then what happened yesterday? Yesterday was really very, very interesting. But number one, you had this other block up here, but I bought yesterday. Why? Let me show you something. Let me show you something really good so you understand what, I, what I've been teaching that for the past days. Now, if you look at this chart very really carefully, um, we can see that the previous day high was here, right? Let's just mark out that previous day high. They have the high of Thursday. So the high of Thursday was somewhere around there, right? So that was the high of Thursday. And let me make this straight. Right, so that was the high of Thursday. And, you know, we had this other block here at the top there, right? So if you go to the lower time frame, you see something that made me to buy this market. Something very, very interesting. So before this whole drop happened, this is what I was looking at, right? Now, I was watching this market and I saw that I actually bought this, right? So I, I looked at this market, this is the that previous day high. This is that, that, that Thursday's high. So this is the Thursday's high. I've gotten that Thursday's high here. Yeah? So this is Thursday's high. Now, remember what I told you guys, you want to talk about the power of three. When the market wants to go bullish, right? You want to see the market drop down first before going higher. While the market goes bearish, you want to go higher first. But in this case, we have this previous day high clearly waiting here, but we are expecting bearishness, right? So instead of us to, you know, we're expecting bearishness, right? So instead of market to just push higher and then drop down, it's first of all going to lower. And if you notice this, um, if you see as market went lower, you can see that was actually was a bullish market structure break here. Now, watch something. We had this Asian high, which was not tapped into, right? And I also had was this previous day high, first not there. So, so I was looking at this price action, it was looking like a bullish market to me, right? And then I talked to you guys about breakout blocks, right? You watch my video on breakout blocks. Do you get that whenever you have this kind of news, this last up candle, right, before this rundown, this last up move before the rundown, it's also referred to as a breaker. So I went on the 30 minutes time frame. You can check my Twitter and kind of post the trade, right? So I think I bought inside here, right? Now I was looking at this market action very carefully. So I wasn't looking at this and then, I saw markets come back into that breaker. I see that breaker block. 
Now, if you look at the breakout block, you can see that there was actually what a lower a three minutes market structure shift. So you can see how price you know, broke above this. Right, you can see this market structure shift. So you can you look at it. You can see um, you can see this. You can see the market do something like this. This is a high. The, sorry, that's not the two I wanted. Um, so this one. So you can if you see look carefully. So what happens a high, a low, a high, and then a low, and then what's a market short break. So you can see that was also it was a market short break. The market on that book was that high, right? So and then if you look very really carefully, you can also see that was also was a fair value gap inside there. Right? So if you look at inside now, the side is aligning up. There was a gap inside there, right? And this gap one also aligned with what? a single candle order block. Remember, I took about single candle order blocks, which was what? this last down candle. Watch my video on single candle order blocks so you understand better. So I bought inside there, right? I bought inside this this gap and other block inside somewhere inside there. So it doesn't really matter where you buy because uh, I told you that whenever you're taking you're trading with breakers, your stop loss obviously has to be below the last the new reset the new, the swing you can find, right? So this is the swing I could find this low here, right? I put myself below this low. So I should maybe bought inside the fifty percent of the range. The entry doesn't have to be perfect. So maybe bought somewhere inside there. So much I also come below this low. I this this was also really low, and then it was a trade. So I was getting um this high here. So it was like one to one, almost one to two. Right, that's what I did. So I bought down here. Target was this high. You can see the market was smashed my TP nicely. Because I, even though there was a very short block on the daily chart, I was able to catch a buy trade because I understand what lower time frame profiles. When you understand lower time frame profiles, you still able to catch trades regardless of where the market is. Right, number one, I told you guys. Um, on the, on the buy day, market goes down below and then breaks structure. Now, so I have this breaker which aligned with what this break of structure. So I, so I bought inside this breaker block here, and then um, I bought inside this breaker block here. I can see how um, the rest is history, right? You can see how the market bought very nicely, right? You can see the market bought. I you know hit my TP. So my TP was at this high here, just there. The market actually took a liquidity here, so I was anticipating. And then drop. Now, missing my price hit the liquidity. I stayed out of Euro USD because I knew that um, we're in a bear shoulder block on a daily chart. So now, as you took a liquidity, so but that block is not enough. You must take a liquidity to be able to confirm your other block, right? So as you took a liquidity, I was like, okay, now this other block might hold. So sometimes other block doesn't hold without seeing what a liquidity run. So as missing market took a liquidity, I came into the other block. Then that was when I, my my buy, you know, my buy setup was um invalidated so i bought and uh, you know, as once i bought that uh, that thousand high into the other block properly so that was where, where i stopped buying i don't simply stay at the market so now the next thing to do would have been or to sell this guy right i would have been the lesson to do to sell but looking at this particular price action i can't really see a, a sell trade right unless maybe the three minutes charts so let's see let's see let's see i don't really see that was a sell trade because usually I would have loved to see price do any of this. I don't the market do something like this. High, no, no. Um, let's do it again. So I would love to see something like this. This is the high, the low, the high, and then what? The break, and then what? The retest. So I would have loved to see either this, this is not the first example I would have to see. Market, you know, break and then come to retest. That was the first thing I would have loved to see. Or the second thing I would have loved to see is this. All right, this. Sorry, I don't know why it's this break and then retest. So that we didn't see that this is also a kind of market store shift. Either it breaks this one, this low here and retest, or it breaks this, this one here and retest. So for me, there was no, uh, I couldn't really see any trade based on structure. Maybe if you use candlestick formation for your trades, maybe they have caught this. So who use candlestick formation? Right? I don't know, maybe. After they saw this engulfing candle, maybe I've gotten short in it, right? So that's also if you use candlestick pattern for your trades, like look at this big engulfing candle, right? So maybe if you saw this engulfing candle, maybe that sold just after the engulfing candle, just above it all, when price pushed back up again. Now you can see we should have what a single candle that block here. I can see this single candle that block right there. So um, I didn't take this because I, I didn't like this move because number one, I can see that price is suggesting from this other block here. So I can see a price from this other block. So this would have been a no, 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 for me. So I don't know. Personally, I'd love to see price take out this low first before buying, before selling rather. So market did not take out that low, just rejected. So what I've seen this as was a kind of um, reason for price to go higher again. But look at this too, we took a London highs as well. So the market pushed above 
London Heights, right? So push about London Heights and then give this. So if you treat um, engulfing candles, or you're willing to take this with, I've got a very nice out rate. This was very nice, really. If it's short inside there, maybe this thing can do that, okay. Um, so this was very nice to uh, start early. So if it's shorter inside there, this would have been like one is to three, just at this low here, one to three. Um, very really good, nice trade, honestly. So one is to two, yeah, two point five for this low. All right, so at this low here, two point five, and then down. Then if you take a this overall London low here, right, this one the overall target for me. Because this one is overall this low here, so overall target I mean this low. Right, so overall target this low. So that I mean it's overall target this low here. I don't know why it's not acting up. All right, so that would have been about one is to five point nine or there about. Right, that is basically what you should have done it. Or another example, another way you are taking this trade is that I was another way you are taking this trade is that I was playing this lasting balance here. Yeah. So, turn on it, you can just play the lasting balance. Although that was no market structure, so this lasting balance will be your, your second, you know, entry maybe as price made that single line. Like you can also take your trade inside this, this that single name balance there. Yeah. Just maybe as markets came with the other shorter inside there, stop us above just to be safe, and then this so one is to. About one is about two, point, one is two. Then, if you have it all the way down here, that one is to 3.4. So, yeah, have still got a good nice trade on this. All right, this is these are, these are the ways to enter the market without market structure break. You can always enter with a single can order block, you can also enter with the imbalance that's created by the single can order block, right? But usually, I like, I, personally, I, I like to see price break a low before the can trade. I like to see price take out a low, right? That's gives me more, more confidence, right? But there are times in which there is a call like this, like there was no break of story, just close other break and then it sells. And those kind of moves also happen, but most times they can take you out. Right? Personally, like on personal level, I like to see market take out low before trusting this. But at times it's like one out of 10 times that I take trades without liquid. So uh, I've seen it again. Uh, you can take trades without market structure break, but for confirmation and to be most to be more convinced, it's always best you wait for market to give you that confirmation move. Because if the market doesn't give you a confirmation move, um, you're going to be wondering, will you go my way? Will you not go my way? All of those kind of stuff, right? So that is basically what happened on this guy, right? And similarly, if you look at GPUSD, we have something similar too, right? So you can see how we also had, you know, this consecutive other, other blocks here, right? This is this consecutive uh, other blocks, right? And we also had the you know, previously higher so on this one. So I was also looking at this as well, right? But although I didn't look at this high, this was the high I was looking at because why? This candle was inside the previous candle. So you guys, whenever you see an inside by candle, don't pay so much attention to it. Whenever you see a candle that's inside a bigger candle, don't pay so much attention to that one. Pay attention to the candle that is bigger. Like this candle has a bigger range. You can see the high and the low. So this is an inside by candle. Inside by candles are not really, really that important. But I look at the candles that are outside, the one that made it as you know, if if maybe this happened, if maybe this candle was able to go above this previous candle, right? They would have used it. But you can see that this green candle did not go above the previous candle. So the candle we are looking at is the biggest candle, the bigger range candle, right? Not this one in between, because this one is really indecisive, right? So we had the same setup here, other block, and then we had that high. So if you go to the lower time frame, we have seen that there was also a buy and sell reversal too, a buy and then a sell reversal. So if you check um this, you can see also something also similar happened there. So you can see Thursday, it was on Thursday. So <clears throat> these are people really high up here, this red line here. And you can see how much it was around this low. Remember what you would like to see on bullish days. We love to see this kind of moves. Markets go below Asian low and then give us a bullish break. And then, of course, you can see there was also a breaker block trade here. Yeah? Very nice one. Markets came into this breaker. Um, if I was selling this, I don't know. You have used maybe a large stop loss because of this. So maybe if you were buying selling buying this one, you know, sell. Maybe you're about to miss other block here. And sell us have been all the way down here, of course. So all the way down here, of course. This is you know, where I can see kind of low. So that then maybe we're targeting this high. This has been like one is a three. But the trade was actually very slow trade. Took time to pan out. So let's see how many minutes that took. Took out, it took some time to pan out. Took like um Three hours and fifteen minutes, almost four hours. So it was very, very slow trade, rather. Right? So it was very, very slow trade, really. It was very slow. 
So Marcus and I came into the other block there. So what do we see here? We saw it was a consolidation here, right? Then finally, what happened? Uh, market, the market broke to the downside, right? Look at this. Uh, market of those ships here. So that would have been a sell then. Where well, would they have played the imbalance here, right? And then the imbalance on the other block. So maybe this is the imbalance inside there. So if it's anywhere in this imbalance, would have been a good sell, right? Anywhere it's an imbalance. So anywhere there would have been a good sell, right? So anywhere there would have been a good sell. So maybe if you take it, if you take 50 of the, of the, maybe take 50 percent of, of the um, remember what I what I'm saying. The entry doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to really. It doesn't have a perfect entry, right? So and so look at this. If you did that. Maybe you're targeting this low here. Yeah. Target one is to two. This is low one is to two. Then if you're targeting the overall London low, which is down here, so that would be like one is to let's see. Overall London low is here. Yeah, one is to five, and price did not actually hit it yet. So me for 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 typical poses, I always target the border of the candle because this is where the volatility is. Me, I like to target the border of the candle because I, I, I don't really like long weeks. Long weeks are very manipulative. So if I was to take this, I wouldn't target that low there. I'll take the bull of this candle to see. So I'm tipping somewhere around just above the body. Because you look at the body, this is the way the, the body of the candle stopped. And to convince you, go to the line chart and you see there. So I said, this is, this, this is the key level, right? Key level, uh, you know, by sales of the person turn there. So that's the kind of key level on the high, on, you know, from the line chart perspective. So whenever you see turning points on the line chart, they act as key levels. Because it's, you can see our price was right in there. But you can see as market broke it. The market is playing around that area. So for me, I just tip it just above it, just a bit above it. This will be one so 4.4 for me. So I wasn't, you know, looking at G yesterday, but this is what I would have done. I was watching it. And it actually happened very late in the day. It happened very late, like afternoon session. So anyway, I heard this trade out of mine. So it happened very late in the day, like three hours after. Probably three hours after um, London open. Oh, sorry, New York open. So that was basically what, what happened on G, EU, and Euro yesterday, right? So it was just as a new one pair. This is market mentorship now. We just want to spot this things, you know, give you a better answer. So for USHF, let's look at the daily charts. So USHF has no, has just been, has been bullish to me. Um, all right. So USHF has been bullish to me, right? Although you can see this other block, I don't, I don't trust it because why? If you go to the weekly charts, you can see that there is a very big imbalance up here. So I don't really trust that, that other block because I can see this imbalance has not been filled, right? So price can still choose to go for that. I very really possible that price can go for that, right? So that is what I'm looking at. But for you, for you, uh, USD Chapters today, there was no really clear market move, right? Right, there was no market was kind of in a range, right? There was a range. Look at it. Market has been a, in a, in a choppy range for a while because the market is, is you know finding it difficult to bridge this other block. You know, this other block is acting as a kind of um stumbling block, right? So the stumbling block is not letting price you know move as it should, right? So yes, this is why I was been staying at the shape this week, right? So this stumbling block is not letting price to move smoothly, but in my opinion, I feel that this guy is going to is going to break bullish, right? But you know, anything can happen. I personally, I would love to see price at least drop down, maybe um into this imbalance down here. So maybe if I was maybe this imbalance down here, maybe that yeah. I don't see market maybe drop down here and react. Well, I don't know really, I don't really know. Right. Either that or this, or you know, price can still come back again into this other block here. Right. This last down can be price can still choose to come back there again in the future before pushing higher, right? So these are possibilities, but for now, it's best to wait for USD chip. Now, look at the USD chip current range. There's no setup yet because look at this big range candle here. This is the high of the big range candle, and this is the low of the big range candle. So I said there is no liquidity grab yet. If price maybe went below this low, we have maybe look for buys. If it goes above this high, we look for sales. Right. So right now, we're in a rate, we're in between the markets. So if you want to, if you're looking for buys, market should at least go below this range low. Looking for sales, market should go above this range high. So this is what will determine what we will do on USD chip. Either market goes highs or it goes lower. So that it depends on what USD chip gives us, right? So if you don't see anything there, then there's nothing to do, right? So that is, that is just market mentorship. So this is just to give you a perspective on how 
I see the market, right? This is my fly by your head because maybe you're in for the first time, right? Well, that's how these things are done, right? So that is it. And then, of course, um, we have a paid mentorship. If you want to join us, we have classes, you know, every week. Um, we are on pause for now because of this YouTube mentorship. We resume properly in November. Um, if you want to join us, you can also send me a DM, right? We are actually running it out. Um, the price has actually increased to 70,000 Naira. But currently, if you join us for now, between now and the end of the month, you can join us for, for 40,000 instead of 70. That's 30,000 Naira off, right? It's for a year, right? Not forever. Just one year. Just to be with us and then learn from us like that today, right? So, I'd love to see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Cheers and God bless.